Hey, what's up guys? So in my last setup video, we set up the Expression XP 15,000 for sublimation printing using refill cartridges and Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation ink. In this video, we're going to go over what to do if you accidentally update the printer's firmware. So let's get into it. Okay, as you can see, I have my refill cartridges in and it's telling me that there is a firmware update available in the update the firmware in the settings menu. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and click OK to dismiss that. I'm going to close out. And we're at the uh, the home screen. And so I'm going to go over, I'll go down, I'm sorry, to settings. And then I'm going to arrow down till I get the firmware update. And I am going to update the firmware. And we're going to go to start checking. It's going to tell you a new firmware was found. And normally we tell people not to update the firmware, but for educational purposes, we're going to go ahead and update it. And I'm going to show you how to recover your firmware with your activation code. So we're going to click on yes. We're going to update the firmware. I'm going to go to agree here. Okay, so after the uh, firmware update to the uh, newest Epson firmware, as you can see, it'll tell you that it cannot recognize the ink cartridges. Select X to clear the air. Um, here are my refill cartridges here. So, of course, they don't have chips on them, so that's why I can't recognize it. Um, you can hit next here, but it'll keep telling you that it can't can't recognize them. So what we need to do is reinstall the chipless firmware. We're going to do that on the computer. All right, so now that we got the maintenance error on the printer's home screen that's telling us to replace those cartridges and we cannot print. So what we need to do is uh, reinstall that chipless firmware. Uh, this time around, I'm going to be using inkchip.net inkchip uh, chipless firmware. So uh, we're going to go there and um we're going to click on soft now at this point if you have uh antivirus you might want to go ahead and uh, disable it at this point that way when you go to download these uh these archive files uh the antivirus might pick it up as a virus even though it's not so it'll read it as a false positive and it'll quarantine it so it'll look like you don't have anything in your um in your archive file when you go to extract it. So make sure that your um, antivirus is uh, disabled before you continue if you have it. So we're gonna scroll down here to XP15000. We're gonna download the firmware. And I already have this downloaded, so I'm gonna skip over this, just kinda doing this to show you. And then we're gonna download the activation Again, I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to skip out of here. All right. So now you also want to make sure that your printer is connected to your uh, computer with a USB cable. Also, it has to be a Windows PC that you do the upgrade on or the update on if you've um, had this printer connected to a Mac and you've accidentally updated the firmware like we just did, you'd have to uh, get a buddy with a PC and have them do these steps. And then once the firmware is written, they can give it back to you to be able to use it on your Mac. So after we've got the, uh, the uh, firmware downloaded, we'll go ahead and run it. Let's see. So I've got all of them here. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna make a folder here. So and we're gonna dump all of these in there. And that way when we're done we can just delete that folder. So now what I need to do is reinstall the firmware first. So I need to double click the firmware and I use a program called PZIP, which is my archiving software. And that's gonna allow me to extract that 
that software into that folder. So we'll hit extract, then we'll click OK. And it extracted that folder into the XP15000 folder that we just made. So we'll go ahead and double click that folder and we are going to be running this inkchip.net firmware XP15000. So we'll double click on it and we'll click on yes. And we're gonna next through these next couple of steps. Of course, you're gonna say I agree, hit next, hit next. And as you can see, we want to um, select the one that says USB. You want to uncheck the one that says network. And then you want to click on start. It's going to ask you if you want to proceed with the firmware update, click on yes. And then it's going to update the firmware and restart the printer. Okay, so once the printer has restarted and it says firmware version confirm, you can actually stop this process. I, I normally just right click down here in the task manager. Um, I mean, in the taskbar, then click on task manager. I'll scroll down or just type in E until you get down to Epson firmware updater. And then you can hit end task. But if you feel more comfortable waiting for it to say uh, complete it. It'll never say complete it. It'll get to 99% and tell you that the update failed. So once it gets to that point, you just click out and then um, the firmware uh, has been written to the printer. So now at this point, what we need to do is activate it. So that's where the uh, activation code is going to come in. So this is the activation code that you would have gotten from inkchip.net um, or whoever you got your um, chipless firmware from. Uh, you're going to double click on it. You're going to either, you can take either the activation code or the recovery code. Either one will work. Um, we're going to do the recovery way just so I can show that. So I'm going to copy this text here and we're going to um, copy that to the clipboard. And then we're going to run the activation program. Now, when you run this activation program, you might get this, um, this window here telling it protected you. Just click on more info and click on run anyway. And what will happen is the uh, activation program will uh, update itself if it needs to and if it's not the current version it'll tell you to uh, rerun the program so you just close it out rerun it um, so what we're going to do here is um, re uh, install the reactivate the chipless firmware with the activation code so you can see um, we are already connected to the printer uh, with the USB cable so I'm just gonna go down here and click in this window so that the uh, cursor's in the window. I'm just gonna click on paste and that's gonna paste the code that we copied earlier from our, um, our, uh, our activation code. It's gonna be this text here. It's gonna paste that in there. You click on activate and then the off screen what's happening is the printer's gonna restart and then the chipless firmware will be written back to the printer. Now, if you uh, lost your information and you have to repurchase it, you can always go up here to buy and go to XP series. It's going to be the XP 15,000 up, up here at the top. And you can click on add to cart. And when you click on checkout or the cart to checkout, type in the code gorilla and you're going to save 10% at the checkout. So uh, $55 turns into $49.50 US if you're here in the States. So 
if you've uh, tried to install the uh, chipless firmware from Inkchip in the past and you ran into errors where um, you, might, you might get an error code on there, uh, try to re-download it again. They've updated it within like the last, I would say, three or four days. And I've been uh, test driving out the new firmware and it's very, very stable. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, also, at any time, um, if you have any types of issues with their firmware or anything like that, just go to contact and you can give them a, a, a holler at the, through the contact form here and they'll get back with you. But if you've had issues in the past, the newer firmware uh, for the XP15000 uh, runs a lot, uh, a lot more stable. And again, it's brand new, uh, just recently came out within the last... Like I said, maybe four or five days. And I've, like I said, been test driving it um, for some time before they uh, posted it back on the website. So check them out. And if you have any issues, give them uh, a holler through the contact form there and they'll be able to square you away. OK, so now that we got our chipless firmware reinstalled, we can go ahead and print out our design and get it pressed. So if you've been following along on our website, um, we didn't have the sublimation ink for this printer up for a while. Uh, after we received our initial samples, we worked with the supplier uh, and they were able to recalibrate the uh, the red ink. And we're really happy with the way it came out. So now uh, that's available for purchase on the website. And I'll put a link. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. So thanks for checking out the video. Again, if you have to repurchase your key, then I recommend inkchip.net. And don't forget to use the code GORILLA when you check out. That'll save you 10% on the checkout. Until next time, good luck and good night.